welcome to Power Up with NSA North Texas, a show about finding, hearing, and maximizing valuable insights from some of the world's leading business and lifestyle speakers. Each week, International Keynote Speaker and National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter President Betty Coffey sits down with some of the most exciting speakers this side of the globe to hear from these subject matter experts what's making a difference in business today and learn all there is to know about people, profits, and productivity in business from some of the world's best motivators. This is Power Up with NSA North Texas. And now, here's your host, Betty Coffey. Hi everyone, I'm Betty Coffey, your host today on the National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter Podcast. I'm happy you're here. The NSA National Speakers Association is the premier organization for professional speakers. Our members talk to audiences as thought leaders, authors, consultants, coaches, trainers, educators, motivators, and we do it every day. What you're going to hear on this podcast program is some of the some of the issues that companies are, are encountering today. What they're what they're cutting edge. They want to know what they're what the cutting edge topics are, and they want to know the solutions. And so they hear about those solutions right here with National Speakers Association North Texas from our own subject matter experts. I'm so excited today. My guest is Miss Peggy Edge. Hey, Miss Peggy. Welcome, hey, Betty. Welcome to our podcast. Peggy, Peggy is just a super, super nice individual, and she's got a wealth of information on networking. She is known as the connector of people. She's an avid, avid business networker, and she's also known around Dallas as the queen bee of networking. She's the owner of Pedge Enterprises, is a certified coaching professional, corporate sales trainer, professional speaker, and consultant. She's honed her networking and leadership skills have being in various networking and sales organizations. She's a pro. She's an absolute pro and has a real plan of action every time she goes into a networking situation. She shares her expertise in business networking with individual clients, sales teams, civic trade organizations, and educational institutions. Peggy's topic today is business networking for success, not just networking, but let's make it successful. Peggy has grown her business, and I find this fascinating. She has grown her entire business by warm referrals. She's never, ever cold called before. It's all warm referrals, and we love that. That's word of mouth. That's how she gets her business. She has a five-step program that she's going to talk to us about today, how to draft a roadmap that's going to give you lead generation, how to craft a killer 30-second message to get the person you're talking to to get their attention. How to identify, develop, and train your connections to help you sell. How to turn cold leads into warm referrals and how to use the networking rules of engagement. Plus, she is an absolute LinkedIn specialist and everybody in the world needs LinkedIn. Yes, I do. So, Ms. Peggy, I'm so happy to have you today as our guest. Good to be here. Welcome. So talk to me, how did, how did it all get started? How did you go from packaging, being a successful career in packaging sales, which you still do, to being a professional coach, speaker, and consultant? How did that all happen? Well, 20 years ago, Betty, I started my packaging company. At the same time, I joined a business-to-business networking group that had just gotten off the ground here in Dallas. Um, I've been in the group now 21 years, Ooh. the same group. And uh, during those 21 years, 16 of those, I've served in leadership, being the president four years. And, um, you know, I just learned that if you just keep networking and connecting people, you will get what you want. You know, Zig Ziglar said that. If you help enough other people get what they want, eventually you'll get what you want. And that actually works. That, that does. It does, it does. Work. <laughs> You're right. So you're just, when you go yeah. to a networking event or you're in charge of a big networking organization, it's not just for you. It's taking the time to say, hey, Betty, meet Joe. Joe, meet Mark. Mark, mm-hmm. meet Mike. Meet Kathy. Whoever. And then getting that whole thing going. And that creates, I, lo- I love the word momentum. That creates some real momentum Absolutely behind networking. Does. I love that. So tell me about your programs. You have a couple different programs. Let's start with your five keys to effective business networking. What are those? 
Well, number one is to have a plan. <laughs> Golly gee, who, who would thought? Most people do not have a networking plan as part of their marketing plan, but they've got to do that. They've got to determine what their ROI is in any event that they're going to, hard cost as well as soft cost. Mm-hmm. They've got to have a killer 30-second commercial. I mean, they've got to know the who, the what, and the why about you in order to be able to refer you. And uh, that 30-second commercial has got to be clear and very concise and memorable. You want people to remember you and what it is that you do. Just not your typical elevator story. Uh, That's right. You do not start with your name. You start with maybe a question or a statement about your industry. You know, did you know Mm -hmm. such and such? Or make a statement about, um, you know, whatever it is that you do. And uh, then the third thing would be to identify develop and train your synergy partners your connections because what you want them to do is to be able to go out in the marketplace and when they're talking to their friends their connections and someone says you know i've been having so much freight damage with my packaging and uh immediately somebody says i know somebody you need to know you need to call peggy because that was a buzzword that i would use in my commercial quite often Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've got to be able to train your connections. And um, then the other thing is, you know, a lot of times you'll get somebody who'll say, well, you need to go call Joe Bob, and he needs a lot of packaging over there or whatever. And that is not a referral. So train your connections so that you can turn that cold lead into a warm referral. Warm is the key word there, right? It is the the key word, exclusively. And then finally, number five, is just some basic rules of engagement about networking, how to show up and look and act professional. And I'll give you an example. I was at an event one day, and there was a young man that was first-time visitor, and he said something that sparked my interest. So afterwards, I went to him, and I said, I'd like your business card. Oh, I don't have any business cards today. (laughs) He said it just like that. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) You know? <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking, well, why are you here? Uh-huh. You right. know, you didn't show up and look like a professional. You're, you've got to do that. Plus that, what does it take for people now to make a first impression of you? Like, I think six seconds or eight seconds. Within seconds. Yeah, within Absolutely. seconds. So you can't look sloppy. You can, I mean, right. it's all networking. People are checking you out immediately yes. and figuring out if they want to talk to you further. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, another big part of your program that you are very involved in is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And you help people use it as a true marketing tool, not just a social media venue, but a real marketing tool. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, like you said, most everybody has a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come across very few people that do not have one. But what they do is that they put their name out there they might write a little bit about what they uh, are doing for a a living but they haven't really maximized what LinkedIn can do for them LinkedIn really is your personal brand I mean that's where you can shine you can toot your own horn so to speak Um, you know talk about what what your expertise is and because you want to get recognized as an expert in your industry in my industry in packaging we're a dime a dozen on every corner, just like bankers and insurance people. Mm-hmm. But what is that one thing that gives you the edge over your competition? <laughs> Peggy Edge? I like how you did that. That's right. <laughs> I love that. And that, that makes so much sense. LinkedIn, in our world, has become so important. Um, LinkedIn is, 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 Facebook is your social, social media, okay? But LinkedIn is truly the business. And what you put out there is speaking really for you. And you got to optimize it, as Absolutely. you just said. You have to have a complete profile, fill out the entire questionnaire that they ask you, mm-hmm. and make sure that uh, it's complete. Because otherwise, I'm, one of the things I find is that a lot of people don't have all their contact information readily available. Do you want people to call you? <laughs> yeah. Pew. Uh, have a phone number. Have your business email address. Your website. Um, whenever I'm reviewing someone that I'm going to work with and, and help them with their LinkedIn, quite often I'll see that maybe they have a website listed that was two jobs ago. Jeez. You know? Yeah. So you've got to keep that current. It's very important to keep it current. Very current. Yeah. Yes. Fresh, clean, mm-hmm. frosty. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think when most people think about going to a networking event, I know that 
gosh, I go to a lot of different networking events, and you've really got to plan ahead of time. You just can't just walk in there and shake some hands and exchange business cards and maybe go for the coffee or go for the iced tea or whatever they're having. Um, you've got to have a plan when you go. So talk to me about it's just not showing up. True Absolutely. networking is an art. It is. Talk to me about that art. Yeah. I tell everyone whenever I speak about networking, if you go to an event for the purpose of selling people, you're there for the wrong reason. True. Like You've that, got, yes. you absolutely have to nurture those connections. Just like I said in my five-step program, you've got to train those people so that they know that they basically can give your commercial to someone else. Wouldn't that be good? If yeah. you had it down so pat, so short, so quick, and so memorable. Absolutely. That's a good exercise. Mm -hmm. And then have someone turn around and give it back to somebody else. Ooh, yeah. I love that idea. That's what you should work towards. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so what makes, so talk to me about that. What makes a really good, effective 30 second commercial? Okay, it's about three parts the who, the what, and the why. Who are your clients or prospective clients? What levels of management are they? What industries do you uh, associate with? Associate with, with. yeah. 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 Um, what is the product or service that you offer? Now, you notice I said, product not plural okay when you have your 30 second commercial it's not a dissertation it is only 30 seconds true so you've got to get it very concise a lot of times what i see is people try to cram too much information in their 30 second commercial and the listener goes Bleh. yeah and they're just going to disengage you've lost them totally you've lost them totally so concentrate on one product or one service if you're in a service organ, uh, organization or do service for the public, what you want to be able to do is to give an example of how you've helped someone in that market. Give an example. Yeah, give an example. Like a story. You can't only have yeah. time for a story, but give an example so people associate with exactly. it. Exactly. If you're a CPA, for example, what is it that you do different from the next CPA on the street corner? Give an example in your 30 second commercial. I love that. But the who, that. the what, and the why. And then the why is your value proposition. Why is people, why should people be interested in you? you know, what is it that you have? What problem do you solve that they would be interested in talking to you further? Love that. So three points, the who, the what, and the why. And I remember when we have talked before that you always want to cover making it clear, concise, memorable, those sort of things also tie right into your who, what, why to, to really make it valuable. So by the time you leave that eighth floor of the, of the hotel and you're down to the first floor, they're like, whoa, I want to know more. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yes. That's the goal. I love it that. Is. Okay, so there are many, many people that have LinkedIn. Uh, they've got a LinkedIn profile, but they don't truly know how to use it as a marketing tool. What can you tell our listeners today to start using LinkedIn and how they should be using it as a networking tool to, to really see, see more action, see more hits, see more networking benefits. Mm -hmm. What can you tell them? Well, to engage with your connections. On the, oh. uh, across the top of LinkedIn, on the far right, there's notifications. And every day you get notifications of your connections that have changed jobs, have a work anniversary, or have a birthday. So just engage with them. You write them a short little note, wishing you a happy birthday today, wishing you a great uh, work anniversary. And like me, in the, in the fact that I do coaching and do training, quite often when they have a, a job change, I'll reach out to them and say, you know, how can I help you continue growing in your career? Not just happy anniversary. That's right. But what you're doing is going the next step. Yeah. How can I help you? Congratulations. Now, how, what can I do to help you in this new career? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I also put those uh, folks in my, especially the ones who are changing jobs, I will put them in my calendar six months down the road to contact them again. How's the new job going? What can I do to help you? You know, I might even mention that I've got a LinkedIn class coming up or that I do personalized coaching one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that sort of thing. 
I love that. So you're working it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Every opportunity it. I get, yes. Talk to me about, I, I really, this goes so much into my belief of how important people are. Talk to me about networking and growing your business and how successful you've been with just warm referrals. So talk to me about how you did that and, and about warm referrals. Well, in my packaging company, uh, and, and I'm doing that more and more in my coaching as well, but in packaging, I would just, you know, I always talked about my networking group whenever I would go out and call on the Bubba's. I, mm-hmm. I call the them Bubba's. The Bubba's, yeah. <laughs> Operations managers and plant managers, I call them Bubba's. Uh, but I would always tell them about my networking group. What else is it that I can help you do today? And it doesn't benefit me other than a, an Atta girl on my back. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, they would always think of me. I even had a guy call me one day. He said, Peggy, I've got holes in the uh, concrete out in our parking lot. Do you know anybody that fills holes? And I'm going, well, no, not right now. Let me think about it, you know. <laughs> but uh, I am well connected. I know a lot of people. Oh, yes. And, you know, even those people that I don't know, I know people that can give me the answer to that. This is true. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you in action, even within our National Speakers Association, North Texas chapter, mm-hmm. when I needed a, a I, I think I mentioned that I needed to, Peggy, I needed an electrician. Boom! With about 10 minutes, she had a contact for me. I mean, it didn't matter to you if I use that guy or not, but right. you've also done that with um, a website development. You've mm-hmm. done that with videographers. Your Rolodex must be huge. Yep. <laughs> and But you keep those warm referrals. And I've also noticed how much you reach out. And you say, I haven't talked to this person for a while. Or let's go catch a, a cup of coffee. Or let's go do this or whatever. Um, you you really have a strategy that really, truly works. You are probably the top networker in our NSA chapter. You truly are. You do You work it. You really do. So tell me, who is your typical client that you're going to work with and how does that work? It would be an individual who wants one-on-one coaching. Uh, it could be a sales manager or a sales team. Uh, civic and trade organizations, they're always hiring uh, speakers, breakout session mm-hmm. uh, folks. So, um, you know, there's not one industry because everybody needs a coach. If you're in business, I don't care what it is that you do, you need a coach. Whether it's a business coach or a sales coach, you need a coach. Um, you know, if they're looking to be able to grow their business on warm referrals, like I like to do, um, you know, we can work one on one on them. I know that you've done some seminars and workshops for organizations out there on just basic networking Mm -hmm. and what it is and how to get people comfortable with it and used to it and the value of warm referrals. So you really work with individuals, companies, organizations, Mm -hmm. whatever they're going to need. You customize those programs. Yes. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So when a client wants to work with you, how do they get started? What's the process that you use when you start working with them? Well, um, I'm working with a young lady right now who is in the insurance industry, and I'm working with her on her LinkedIn profile. And she just has her name out there. She didn't have any contact information out. She didn't even have a description of the type of insurance that she does, Mm -hmm. which is uh, group health insurance. And so I had to assess where she is right now and then figure out, you know, where to take her. The plan of action. A plan of action. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you're always customizing it. Trying to. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, okay. Now I know this is, uh, this is the yin yang of Betty, but if I was a shy, (laughs) if I was a shy introverted person and new to the Dallas Metroplex, which can be kind of overwhelming Mm -hmm. because Dallas Metroplex is big, convince me that this is really going to work for me because I'm going to be a little afraid of this. I'm going to be a little afraid of going to some different networking organizations and, okay, you know, breathing and walking in that that organization with a sea of people that I know nobody of. Tell me how that works. Is it going to work for me even though I might be shy, quiet, introverted, and I haven't done a whole lot of networking? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I have a client that I just finished up with. Uh, she's from Dallas and she's been living in LA for about the last six years and she moved home and she is starting a um, an organizing business and she's very shy and she had never networked before and so the first thing I did was invite her uh, to my group 
for lunch. I paid for her lunch to come and, and see what we're all about because she had never been to a networking event, so That's to nice. speak. Yeah, and uh, so she got a little bit of uh, experience there. And during that day, she um, connected with a young lady who is an architect. And that lady invited her to an architect group that meets once a month. And so she was able to kind of get right in pretty easily. And uh, then I worked with her on her 30-second commercial. I gave her my book as part of, of my program, working with her. And uh, she's off and running now. Now, she's still pretty <laughs> shy, but uh, she went to that uh, architect's group, and she picked up some referrals there with realtors and all because her client base are folks that are either downsizing or maybe they're moving, uh, you know, even companies. She does some work with companies. So, so there's yeah. hope. There's hope. <laughs> Absolutely, there's hope. So one of the things that always impresses me is on different networking groups, there is a big difference between people that, yeah, are looking at you and they're in front of your face and they're looking at you and they act like they're paying attention, but they're really, really not. Talk to me about the preparation, perhaps that you coach clients on, of really listening, listening to what that other person is saying, getting out of Betty world, if you will, mm -hmm. and really listening to what that person's saying and make a connection, not just communicating, but actually making that connection. Well, number one, they've got to put down their cell phone. Bingo. It's, yes, bingo. It's, no texting, right? No texting. Yeah. Absolutely. Because uh, they're not engaging. Right. They, and people know that. And, you know, it, it's uh, more and more every time you go to an event, I don't care what it was. Uh, back a couple of years ago, I was at a funeral, and I met a friend in the parking lot, and we sat by each other. And all during the funeral, he's sitting there texting. He wasn't wow. paying attention to anything that was being said. You know, so. Makes such an impression. So you've got to you've got to engage. You've got to um, and really listen. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, listen, and then try to try to repeat back to yourself. You know, one of the things that I always have a tough time doing is memorizing names. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can. Me too. <laughs> I got to be honest. I go to a networking event and they talk about their dog. Oh yeah, I'm going to remember the dog's name, mm -hmm. or I might remember the horse's name if if it's a if it's a situation where, where horses are involved. But what is very tough sometimes to pick up on a name and to memorize it. Mm -hmm. Pretty, I'm better with faces than I am with names. Me too. Yeah, that's, that's tough to do. So any suggestions there? No, I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, you know, I they don't. always said, try to look at the person. Do they look like a movie star? Okay, yeah. or just do your best to really, really pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's hard because uh, a number of years ago, I had a, a client and I, I cannot to this day remember his name, but he was a dead ringer for a friend of mine I grew up with, uh -huh. and his name was Steve. And I would <laughs> take my my card on him as I was getting out of the car, and I'd look at his name, and I'd go in, and every time I'd call him Steve. I said, it's nothing personal, but you just <laughs> look like Steve. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? That's right. Whatever it Whatever takes, because it, it really, really not makes a, a big difference. And also, if you if you listen to this person and they start mentioning, well, yeah, I've got two daughters, Amy and Annie. Boy, boom, as much as you can. Remember Amy, Annie. Mm -hmm. I knew a person that every time that they would go to a networking event, they would look at the business card and kind of do this thing where they might have pushed down a corner of the card. Those were the people they wanted to really remember. Mm -hmm. And then while it was still fresh on their mind, they would write kids, Amy, Annie, uh, live in you know, Rowlett mm -hmm. or whatever, or a big baseball fan or a huge Dallas Cowboy fan, mm -hmm. just so that the next time you talk to that person, hey, what did you think of the game? What mm -hmm. did you think of our Dallas Cowboys? Or what did you think? How's Amy and Annie doing? That, that, wow. That it gets her attention. Miles yes. ahead. It really, truly does. Yeah, I do that a lot with my uh, Outlook. Whenever I put someone in Outlook, if I have some little pointers like that, I'll include that in my notes. That's smart. Yeah, absolutely. That's very, very smart. Mm -hmm. So you have different opportunities for our listeners and, and to participate in some of your LinkedIn training classes uh, late February and March. Kind of give me an idea of, we'll talk about how they can get a hold of you in a minute, but what you cover in some of those classes and, and both in LinkedIn and networking, what they're like. Well, in the networking classes I do and the workshops that I put on, I, I cover all five of those uh, key steps mm -hmm. that's in my workbook. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I can also just zero in on the 30 second commercial because that's the real key is to having a good concise 30 second commercial a killer commercial uh, in LinkedIn we spend a lot of time talking about how to personalize it to your expertise making sure your headline for example you don't put that you're the owner or the president of the company who cares right who cares but um, you know back some time ago I got an opportunity to speak at a group in Fort Worth the lady had gone into LinkedIn and she typed business networking and my name came up first and that's how I got that gig off of LinkedIn off of LinkedIn yes that's wonderful but that's in my headline that's the first thing you see in my headline I don't so there's even, a real science behind it. Yes, absolutely. There is. I love that. I love yeah. that. Okay, so if our audience uh, wants to know more about Peggy Yu, how can they contact you? How can they find out more about you? Well, they can go to my website at PeggyEdge.com, or they can call me at 214-725-7626, and we can chat. And I'd love to, uh, to talk to anyone about uh, networking or LinkedIn. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Tell them your phone number one more time. 214-725-7626. Uh-huh. Wonderful. You know, one of the things I love about Peggy, I've known her for a few years now, and she just tells it like it is. So you, when you go to one of her workshops or seminars, she's a very, very authentic transparent person that's going to be very honest with you really really go out of her way and do whatever it's going to take to help you with your goals of why you're meeting with her and she's got a she's got the most famous saying that i just love so peggy if people are doing if, if, if you have to do something but you know you have to do it kind of like maybe going into a networking event and you want to tell them it's very uncomfortable what's your most famous saying that i just love I'd rather eat barbed wire. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Very first time, I'd rather eat barbed wire than do that. I just love that. <laughs> that kind of gives you an idea on Peggy and how special she is. Okay, so Miss Peggy, the last words you have to leave to our audience today, what are they? Well, it's to get the edge over your competition. Be willing to give first. Mm-hmm. Uh, build and develop your synergy partners. Share a resource or be a resource and connect our people and make connections and seize opportunities. Love it. Make connections and seize opportunities. Absolutely. You are absolutely the queen of networking in Dallas, Fort Worth. All right. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> no, a lot of people won't be afraid of that Metroplex anymore. Yeah. So thank you. And thank you for joining us today. Peggy, you've been fantastic. Well, thanks. Such a, a wealth of information. Thank you for being with us today. Remember, It's all about powering up, powering up to be better, to be faster, to be stronger. I'll see you next time. Thank you. And thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Betty, for having me. Thanks for listening to Power Up with NSA North Texas. To find out more about today's guest or NSA North Texas, visit www.speaker.org. To find out more about Power Up, visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash groups slash NSA North Texas. And to find out more about Betty, visit www.bettycoffeepresents.com.